Shake and bake, Cal. Woo! Shake and bake. Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and get ready to talk tax prep software. What, not exciting enough? Don't worry. We're going to talk about flossing your teeth on Wednesday. Here to help you choose from all the tax help options, we welcome from the college investor, Robert Farrington. For our TikTok Minute, we teach you how to live your best van life. Vans? Those are for amateurs. Hashtag El Camino life. Am I right? In our headlines, what's going on with mortgages? One stat is at a 28-year low. We'll share which one and what this headline may have to do with you. Plus, we'll throw out the Haven Lifeline to a lucky Stacking Benjamins listener. And then I'll share some delicious trivia. And now, two guys who talk more than schoolgirls. It's Joe and O-J-J-J-J-J-J. Hey there, stackers, and happy Monday. I'm Joe Salci. Hi, Average Joe Money on Twitter, and a happy Monday to you, Douglas. Wow. Am I in trouble? Douglas. <laughs> That's when I get called Douglas. Well, you called us schoolgirls, chatty schoolgirls, so I got to return the favor, as I'm sure you're the elder statesman here on a Monday morning among I'm all of us. I'm not even close to being the elder statesman. Look at, it, look at all that. And the guy across the card table from me, let's say hello to him. The guy who's like a guardian angel in the backseat of the driver's egg car for your money. It's Mr. OG. Well, there's a lot of a lot of descriptors there, but uh, I guess. A lot of imagery. I'm bringing the imagery on a Monday. Backseat driver, but in a good way. Well, all of our... No, 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 no. You're the guardian angel in the driver's egg car. There were times right. I felt like I was sitting in the backseat. I needed a guardian angel. I remember by... Do you guys remember your driver's ed? That was... Mm-hmm. I'm a man of a certain age, I you're and I still about remember. My driving. It. No, no, not your driving. My brothers were in town, and we went driving, and we had to go somewhere. We got out. My brother's like, "I'm going to ride in the back from now on. I feel safer." Because <laughs> <laughs> I can use both. He he can take the middle seat belt as well and put that around <laughs> him just, too. Just do both ways. <laughs> yeah, sit Get in the middle all. And, and do the cross. Yeah. Guys, we got Robert Farrington. Speaking of test drive, we're going to let our stacker community test drive all the different tax prep software out there. There is, it turns out, not one best one. There's several best. And uh, Robert's amazing website, The College Investor, every year goes through which tax prep software might be best for you. That is our feature. But before that, we got a great surprising headline and a TikTok minute. Here we go. Let's move. Hello, darlings. And now it's time for your favorite part of the show, our stacking Benjamin's headlines. Our headline today comes to us from CNBC. And uh, over the last two weeks, OG, we've got some wild news from the mortgage market. Diana Olick wrote this one. Mortgage demand from homeowners drops to a 28-year low. 28 years. Mortgage rates moved higher again a couple weeks ago, pushing buyers back to the sidelines just as the spring housing market is supposed to be heating up. Mortgage applications to purchase home dropped 6% two weeks ago compared with the previous week, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association Seasonally Adjusted Index. Volume, 44% lower than the same week one year ago, now sitting at a 28-year low. You know, real estate professionals have been talking about we don't have enough inventory we might be getting some in- might be getting you're, some inventory. You're, you're about to get it. Do you think the inventory will stay the same, but only because people will recognize that this is just not a great time to sell? Yes. Maybe. Like Zillow says my house has gone up X dollars. I really want to move, but I know I'm, you know, I'm I've got this, you know, four hundred thousand dollar mortgage at two and a half percent. If I want to upgrade to the next house, I gotta go get a six hundred thousand dollar mortgage at six percent. Like the price is you know, the monthly payment is such a big change between those two things. And the prices haven't come down a lot. You know what I mean? So it's not like you're offsetting that with a, you're getting in at a low, lower valuation. But that doesn't that mean, so that's the short term. The longer term then is then we see prices start to come down on houses, right? I mean, well, if there's no, point. like eventually it yeah. has to, it has to, but you haven't seen it yet. So is this year the year 
that the, the housing prices start to come down in different places because people just sit still. I also wonder how much of this lack of mortgages, people chasing a mortgage is because of the fact that we're continually told, oh, mortgages, mortgage rates are so high. The average contract interest rate, Diana writes, on a 30-year fixed rate increased to 6.71 from 6.62 a couple of weeks ago. Not that big a deal. 6.71, if you look at a longer time frame, not a huge interest rate. But how much of it is fueled by that versus maybe the other side, OG, how many people actually did the right thing and locked in low interest rates? We've been doing a lot of stories the past two years versus the 10 years before that about people doing responsible things with their money. The number of responsible stories we've had the last couple of years has been pretty, pretty remarkable. Is that what happened? Or is it because of this idea that we think interest rates are, quote, sky high when they really aren't? Well, I mean, historically, they're not. If you look over the entire expanse of recorded time, but relatively, that they are, right? I Cavemen mean, we're paying like 29%. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> yeah. I was just talking with somebody about this. When I started at American Express in the late 90s, it was all about cash flow, right? I mean, to some extent, financial planning is about cash flow now, too, right? Just making sure you free up some extra money to be able to save and invest. But the number one go-to I remember was what's their mortgage rate? Cause interest rates were, you know, kind of trending down. And the first, my, the first, my first client was my mom. And the first thing we did was refinance her house from eight and a half to seven and a half. So in the nineties, eight and a half was kind of normal. Seven and a half was normal. Six was normal. When we bought our house in Texas in 2015 and we got four for a 30 year fixed, I thought this is an unheard of number. Like, we, we timed this perfectly and now we're sitting at two and a half. So it's the relative comparison is I think what's, what's hurting people in terms of their, their assessments. But the problem is, is that the prices have reflected the affordability of the low interest rates. So when you have lower interest rates, people can afford more. Therefore the prices can go higher quicker. And so you have more competition to buy that same house so you get the bidding and all that other sort of stuff that we were seeing a year ago or two years ago. But the prices are still at that level, but the interest rates are not at the level they were when that started. So there has to be some sort of adjustment there. One would think anyway. People ask us about the differences between real estate and stocks. It both get their get to relatively, you know, the North American real estate index, the NAREED index gets to about the same place as the stock market has over long periods of time. So what's the difference between the two? I think this is a key difference, OG, is that the real estate market is really built on leverage products. Real estate's always been expensive enough that you always just build leverage in it. You and I have talked before about if somebody takes out a margin loan against their stocks, we all think they're crazy and they're a gambler. But if somebody does the same thing with a house, we call it a 30-year fixed, and it's what your neighbor does, it's what everybody does. And this yeah. leverage creates five some to of one, these five to one leverage, even because you put right. you put twenty percent down to finance the other eighty. You think which, Schwab will give you that, right? I mean, you can you can get it. It's it's called portfolio margin. If you're an active trader and have a lot of experience, they'll give you six to one. But you would think that's crazy, right? Put a million dollars in a brokerage account and go buy seven million worth of stock at five percent. Like you would never do that. This creates some cycles in the real estate market then that you don't see in stocks. And likewise, you see different stocks. You see uh, more fluctuation on a daily basis in the stock market because it's more liquid. That's a difference on the stock side. So I think we're seeing something that's kind of a differentiator here between these, between these two asset classes. Regardless, if you're going to get a mortgage right now, for whatever reason, you're going to finally get a debt structure. <laughs> for whatever reason, you're going to be that guy. <laughs> if you're going to be the dude... Well, think about, you know, we've done lots of Navy Federal pieces about finally becoming the CFO of your situation. A lot of people out there have debt. Very few people actually have a debt strategy. So if you're putting together a debt strategy and that involves maybe a refinance or a different type of home loan, I thought it was good to look at a piece about 15 questions to ask your mortgage lender. This comes to us from LendingTree, by the way, the parent company of Magnify Money our sponsor on uh, many of our Friday episodes. Here are the 15 they have, OG. And I do have to say that, uh, that I'm not sure that I agree with all these. As an example, number one, what types of mortgage loans do you offer? I think I want to go first and figure out which type of loan fits my situation best. 
what I want. And then I want to compare Shop companies that, that have that yeah. loan. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to go and go, hey, sell me on your best stuff. Because then well, you're what do you get, got? Yeah, it's going to be a sales pitch. Yeah. Number two, what repayment terms do you offer? I do like this because how often have you seen somebody where a mortgage broker sticks in their, you know, uh, a prepayment penalty? I don't see it a lot, yeah, but not, with some people with low credit scores, you'll see these prepayment penalties sneak in so that the gotcha of a high interest rate is even more gotcha than people thought. Number three, do you offer pre-approval or pre-qualification? I think, I think people just got to know that exists. How does pre-approval and pre-qualification work, OG, and what's the difference between those? Well, the major difference is the level of detail that you're going to get into before you get to each one of those things. A pre-qualification is you just go on a website and say, you know, I make hundred thousand dollars a year, you know, here's my social and they go, yeah, you're, you're, you're fine. A pre-approval is I make a hundred grand a year. Here's my tax return. Here's all my bank statements. Then they say, okay, you're approved for 400 K of a loan. And to be clear, I think most places don't care if you were pre-qualified, do they? Like if I show pre-qualification to a realtor, a real estate agent, and I'm trying to buy a house, they're like, okay, that's cute. Come back when you've got actual pre-approval. I think right now it's so slim pickings that you could uh, spend all day with a realtor. I don't, I don't want you to do that, but you know, don't waste anybody's time. But I bet there's a lot of tire kicking going on that, uh, that one, one could get away with now that two years ago, not even possible. It'd be so, so frustrating. Talking, oh yeah, absolutely. Talking to Alan and Alan and Crystal over on the Stacking Deed show, they've both been in that business and they're like, there's nothing worse than showing somebody the seventh house and you realize they're never going to buy. Yeah. Or they're just not able to, you know, they're just, you're looking at $500,000 houses and they should be shopping for $300,000 houses or something. Well, and on that note, and I skimmed right over this, but when we talked about what type of mortgage loans are out there, somebody who's a new stacker might not know that if they may not even know that the two basic products 15 year fixed and a 30 year fixed, meaning you're buying a set rate for a set amount of time, mm -hmm. either 15 or 30 years, because the bank has to guarantee 30 years that interest rates usually going to be a bump up from the 15 because banks have no idea where interest rates are going to be 30 years from now. So you're going right. to pay a little higher interest rate for a 30, but your payments are going to be smaller. But what else is out there, OG? Because there's a mess of other stuff. Well, the biggest differences are fixed versus variable loans. Yeah, you know, obviously fixed rates are pretty self-explanatory and variable rates will have different bells and whistles attached to them. So you have a little bit lower rate, but there's some flexibility there. Maybe good for you. Like if interest rates go down, you might participate in the fact that it goes down, but if they go up, you, you get hit with that as well. And then all the different terms at those five years and seven years and 10 years and that sort of thing. But I think for the vast majority of people, especially if you're looking at single family houses, this is your, this is your primary residence you're going to want to stick in that 15 or, or 30 year time horizon. There are many more questions on this list that we will link to in our show notes page. And of course, as always, we have a newsletter called the 201, where we do the 101, introduce you to the topic here. And then we dive into much, much more detail with a ton of links that uh, Kevin Bailey from our team has curated. That's our free newsletter comes out every Tuesday and Thursday, stackybedjamins.com slash 201 to get that. And it's always free. And you can unsubscribe whenever you'd like. Stackingbenjamins.com slash 201. And this week, we're going to be doing a lot on mortgages. Time for our TikTok Minute. This is the part of the show where we shine a light on some TikTok person who's just creating some brilliance or maybe some eye roll brilliance. Uh, OG, which one do you think we got today for our family here? Well, everything is eye roll on TikTok, so... <laughs> It's pretty we, obvious. We got to get this in while we can, because I mean, countries are banning TikTok left and right. So we've just got we've got a short horizon on TikTok. I think. Good. Cheryl asked me that uh, yesterday, literally yesterday. Said, "Is TikTok going to get banned in the U.S.?" I said, "I think it's probably coming." Hundred percent. Yeah. So I mean, like, where are we going to get this great information and content for our listeners <laughs> once we can't go to TikTok anymore? All this great information, where two thirds of the time we're 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 sharing stuff that's the dumbest stuff we've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when people stereotype us as just money nerds, right? Money nerds. We, we, we just get stereotyped. And, and actually, I think part of it's kind of fun, leaning into your stereotype and 
here's a stereotype that I know that a lot of people uh, lean into. This is, uh, well, this is a guy who's living his best life in a van down by the river. What's up? My name's Phoenix, and I just picked up this 2021 Sprinter van last week. It's a game changer. The first change I made to it was putting a bumper sticker on the back that says the mountains are calling and I must go get an oil change first because how else am I going to get there? I really like the thrill of knowing that my house can roll away at any moment. I have a collection of spiritual crystals and they need frequent charging. So what better way than just leaving them right on the dashboard? Since I've started van life, I've really felt a lot more grounded personally and physically. I haven't gotten a mattress yet, so I've just been sleeping on the hardwood floor I installed. I mean, people always ask me how I use the bathroom, so I just tell them, same way you do, but with a bucket. Super easy. Still comes out of the same place. Just involves Super a bucket. Super easy with a bucket. And certainly, by the way, I'm, I, am, I am not making fun of van life. I actually think that van life would be, there's a piece of me that's like, let's go. Let's just, let's just hit the road. I tried it. You tried it. Well, no, I hit the uh, Airbnb rent a condo for a month life. That's what I did. I didn't sleep on the hardwood floor in the back of my Sprinter van. You're right. But you're right. This sounds way better. Yeah. (laughs) But you still did the Airbnbs with buckets, right? I did. Yeah. I made sure. How many yurts did you stay in? Just uh, no yurts either. That was disappointing. Maybe next time. Good stuff there. Thanks for sending that. Uh, Margie sent that to us. Thank you so much, Margie, for that. If you've got a TikTok that we should uh, focus on, maybe a serious one, maybe another comical one, uh, send it to Joe at stackingbenjamins.com. Hey, coming up next is uh, Robert Farrington, who has uh, grown this amazing website called thecollegeinvestor.com, one of the top websites for people just out of college on the internet. And every year, we have either Robert or somebody from his team come on and tell us what the latest and greatest is when it comes to software to help you do your taxes. There's more and more choice out there. So we thought this is an important time as people are getting this stuff together to do this. By the way, we originally recorded this interview with Robert on Fireside. So if you join the Fireside app or join our YouTube page, you can hang out with us, and not only did we ask questions, but for the next 25 minutes after we finished, Stackers asked a bunch more questions about their particular situation. So join us on YouTube, go subscribe there, or download the Fireside app. And if you get the 201 newsletter or are in the basement, our Facebook group, you'll see when we're going live. All right, that's Robert coming up next. Can't wait for you to hear this, because he talked about a lot of different software, and I frankly didn't see half of what his answers were. I didn't see him coming. But first... I think uh, I think you're talking um, Women's History Month and chicken. Is that what we're talking about? It's a natural pairing. I, don't, I mean, don't sound so mystified by it. You ready? Let's do it. Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. And now that it's Women's History Month, we can't forget Julia Flick. She became the first female colonel to serve in the Army. Hey, I know another colonel that nobly served the country, chicken. Colonel Sanders, founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken. All right, but hey, in what state was Colonel Sanders' first franchise? I'll be back right after I grab two thighs and a couple of sides. They're stackers. I'm biscuit Duncan and gravy loving Joe's mom's neighbor Doug. You know, the slaw's not bad either. My favorite Colonel's first franchise was in what state? If you guessed the obvious, you're wrong. His first franchise was in the finger licking state of Utah. And now, let's dive into helping you find the best option with your tax prep software with Robert Barrington. It's almost tax time. There's tons of choices when it comes to best tax software out there. And every year we talk with our friends at the college investor about which one is best. And this year we've got the chief man himself, Mr. Robert Farrington joins us. How are you? I am great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, I love that every year, you know, Hannah has put this together in the past. Our friend, Eric Rosenberg, who is 
an amazing writer, uh, wrote this this year. Before we get to which is best, because I know best often is in the eyes of the beholder, let's talk about what you guys actually looked at, Robert. Break us down. What were the different categories you were looking at, the different types of filers you were looking at, and then we'll dive into how these uh, different softwares play against each other. Absolutely. So I think that's the one thing a lot of people don't understand is that, uh, you know, there's a ton of situations and all the tax software programs kind of cater to their niche. And so we actually start in October every year and go through and review all of these things. And there's actually like 20 of them. I would say only about five, seven of them actually are what you know of, but there's a ton of other smaller players in the space. We run through a bunch of mock tax returns through these things that we just make up for people that might just have a W-2 in their job. Maybe you have some investment income, traded some stuff this last year. Maybe you have a rental property. So we try to do some common scenarios. And, and yes, I know that there's going to be someone out there that has a niche scenario that uh, we probably didn't cover. And maybe the tax software won't work for you. But you know, we try to knock out some very common situations. And then we break them down and see what they cost. Because, you know, what really started me to create this thing about 10 years ago was all the people complaining about the gotchas, right? Because they started and then all of a sudden they go to file and they're like, you owe us $100. And people are like, what? Why do I owe you all this money? So I want people to understand what they're getting, what they're paying for, depending on what they're filing for. And so we break it all down every year and we have about 10 different categories now, um, you know, for trying to cover the most situations we can. And I think to make a big point here, what you're really saying here, Robert, is just because your buddy at work says that this software is best for them might not make it best for you. I think that's that's a big point. That's the biggest thing, right? Just because your friends have this, or you don't know what kind of income, what kind of tax credit they have. If they have kids, it's going to make a big difference. If you don't have kids, if you have investments, you know, if you traded stocks last year, if you got in on the meme craze, if you did crypto, I don't know. All of these things could significantly change what you have to file on your tax return, which could also change the price you pay to file your tax return. Speaking of gotchas, any new gotchas from the government this year or things significantly change when it comes to filing your taxes in 2023? The biggest thing is the surprise people are getting with lower tax refunds and even owing. So one thing that happened last year is all of the COVID era tax credits ended. So we're talking about things like the doubling of the child tax credit, the huge increase in the dependent care credit, changes to the earned income tax credit. So families with children specifically are seeing maybe $10,000 in tax credits disappear. Wow. And so where they may have gotten a huge tax refund last year, this year they're like, where'd all the money go? Um, and so that's really the big gotcha. It's not even about the tax software. It's about once they plug in all the numbers, it's kind of shocking. Let's also talk about something that some people sadly don't know, and that's that some people can file for free, right? That some of these programs have free filing, and I know the IRS has some free filing. Can we talk about those people for just a second before we go into this? Yeah, so there are ways to file for free. The IRS has their free file program, so you go to irs.gov slash free file. All of these tax software companies, well, not all of them, many of them offer a free file, but they're limited. There's big asterisks there that says like income limits, what type of income you have. And so a lot of people don't qualify. Then you get to the regular tax software. So if you go to these companies' websites and you see they all also have a free tier, sometimes it's a little more generous, sometimes it's not. Uh, really this year, there's only one free file company, but even it has limits and we can jump into that if you want to. Well, there's probably some gotchas there, I would imagine as well. Absolutely. So we'll just jump in. I mean, the yeah. only tax software company that offers truly free file this year is Cash App Taxes. Uh, Cash App Taxes used to be Credit Karma Taxes a few years ago. They rebranded their Cash App Taxes and they offer free federal and free state filing. But the gotchas are, it's kind of limited. If you have to file taxes in multiple states, you can't use their software. If you have certain uh, you know, tax credits, tax deductions, you can't use their software. And it doesn't have any like fancy features. You can't import stuff. You're doing it all manually. Um, it's great for a lot of people. I don't want to dismiss it. It's a really great piece of software. It's really elegant, easy to use, but it does have some limitations as well. But Hey, it's free. I love free. Well, well, but you and I know it's not our first day, Robert, for neither you nor I in this business, right? Free right. 
free comes with some problems I, I, because they got to make money. If it's free, how is that company making any money? Well, I mean, they're taking your data. I mean, that's it. If, remember, what's that saying, uh, Joe? If uh, if it's free, you're the customer. You're the, product, or you're, you're the product. You're the product, yeah. You're the product. And so honestly, but they're trying to upsell you into a lot of their other products. So Cash App has a banking product, an investment product. They're trying to encourage you to have your refund go into their banking product. You don't have to. You can still you know, tie up your own direct deposit, put that there. But you know, they want you to use their other products and services. And you know, tax software is the big hook to get sure. you in the door. Well, okay, let's go into this then. Everybody's waiting for this. Overall, the absolute number one, just for the average person out there, and a lot of you aren't average, so we're going to have more here. What's your number one choice at the College Investor for tech software this year? And it's probably going to be controversial. They get a lot of that, flack. That's what we like. TurboTax is definitely the number one oh, overall choice. The old and here's story. why. Like almost the it OG, is. Yeah. It's the OG. It is honestly the easiest to use tax software in the world. They make it so easy. It's so elegant. You will pay the premium for this ease of use. Like you will. There's no way around it, but they are leaps and bounds above everybody else. You know, there's some close competitors now. Things are getting better. But if this is your first time filing, if you feel uncomfortable, they make it super easy, very easy questions, a robust support network. And, you know, the prices are there. Um, it's a little more than you'd pay, but it's not outrageous. Plus, this year, they offer a ton of solutions to, like, have it done for you. I don't know if you've seen all the ads on TV. But it's like, come to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. I don't know how I feel about that ad, but they're trying to upsell you into having their CPAs and enrolled agents do their taxes for you. Fabulous. Uh, you said this year in your piece, though, there's a pretty strong runner up at number two. Yeah, H&R Block, they are the strong runner up at number two. They are a little less pricey. And I would say they're like minimally less easier to use. And I say minimally just because they don't have all the integration. So TurboTax has really made it so like you can connect to your banks and brokerages and like get all your data and don't have to input it. H&R Block has a lot of that, not all of it. They have some limitations on investments, but they also have the robust support network, right? Like they got a ton of tax professionals that can help you. They got offices. They're, they got in person. If you need to drop it off, you can actually drop off your stuff in person and then they'll do it and then they'll email you your taxes to you. So you don't have to go back to them. So, you know, there's pros and cons there. It's kind of what you want, what you're looking for. And uh, they're a very close runner up. Well, this goes back to what we said at the beginning. It really, truly begins with you. And by the way, I feel like talking to Hannah in past years from your team that H&R Block software, their do-it-yourself software has really gotten strong over the last three or four, five, like this isn't a new thing, them coming on strong. It feels like every year they seem to get a little better. They are, and they're growing in market share, and their, their, their online product is really getting elegant. Like it's close to TurboTax. Like I said, it doesn't have all the integrations. It doesn't have all of it, but it has a lot of it, and you're going to pay just a tiny bit less. Not much. They're very neck and neck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I mean, it's competitive. That's probably a way for them to try to capture more market share, I would imagine, right? Hey, we charge a little less. And exactly. And I'll let everyone know, too, that it does vary. So these companies like to play games with their federal pricing and their state pricing. If you're one of those wonderful people that don't have state income tax, good for you. I love it. For most of us in this country that you have a federal income tax return, a state income tax return, these companies will like lower the price on their federal and charge a little more on the state. And so it's like when you put the two and two together, you're like dollars apart. It's not very far. I feel like it's it's from the movie Fargo, right? Remember that movie, Robert, uh, where it's all in the Scotch Guard, right? You put the Scotch Ex Guard on the car and you make a little more. Exactly. You got to just <laughs> shine it up, shine it up. I want to mention some of these other, where some of these other players shine, because these are not the only three players, the ones that we talked about. If you're a student loan borrower, you have a different choice if you really have student loan debt. Absolutely. So one for student loan borrowers, you might not get a lot of benefits this year because a lot of them did not pay any student loan interest last year. But typically, if you have student loan interest, it's one of those tax credits that like always bumps people up. And it gets them into like a deluxe tier every year. And so it's one of those shockers, right? Like you thought you qualified for free file and then you end up having to pay like $30 for your federal, another 20 bucks for your state. Now you're at $50. All you want to do is get your $2,500 student loan interest deduction, like, right? Like that kind of sucks. So we love Tax Slayer. 
for borrowers that fall into this situation because TaxLayer has a very cool pricing model where at $39, if they offer it their classic tier, they give you everything. You get the whole kit and caboodle, all the tax forms, no gotchas, and there are no upsells. And so if you fall into this area where like you're getting booted up into like a deluxe at H&R Block or TurboTax, TaxLayer is very compelling. And they're another one of those tax software companies that has significantly been improving their user interface, their usability. They're making a really great product over there. Again, they don't have all the integrations, missing some of that stuff, but like from an ease of use, fantastic. I know in our uh, Facebook group, we call the basement, a lot of our stackers use tax layer and talk very fondly about it. I want to go down to tax liability calculators for crypto and NFT traders. Both of those people that are left, I think, I think, I think a lot of people have been washed out of that market. However, if you have crypto, you've got a different choice. Well, if you have crypto, you have to do two things. And I think a lot of people don't realize this. So if you were one of the people that got in on the hype last year, um, hopefully you got out before the bottom fell in. (laughs) But if uh, I was finally getting in last year, Robert, when the bottom was happening, I was fine. I still still haven't made any money, but I haven't lost any money. So, hey, so you hold an asset. I like it. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, taxes for crypto and NFTs are crazy because you don't get like a 1099 B like you do if you're at Fidelity or Vanguard, like you do trades, you make money or you lose money. Guess what? It's all on you to put this stuff together and create your own 8949, which is the tax form that reports gains and losses. And so over the last couple of years, a bunch of companies have come out with tools where you can link up your, you know, crypto accounts, your ledger wallet, whatever you have, and it'll help you generate these tax forms because then you got to take that tax form and you got to actually go file your taxes at another company because you've got to put the tax form together first. So We like Coinly and Taxbit and Zenledger. These are all good companies. And where the real difference with these companies comes into is the number of transactions you have. Remember, crypto transactions can, you, you, you sell, you trade crypto, you earn like interest, staking, airdrops, all these little tiny transactions can add up. So even if like, Joe, you might already have like 100 transactions, even if you've just been buying and holding just because of the nature of the asset. Mm. And so you need these tools to help you put together your 8949, which then you can take to a TurboTax, H&R Block or a tax preparer. I'm already almost out of hair. I don't know if I have, if I have much left to give with all that work that I'd have to do. If I am a landlord from somebody in the real estate market, we have a new real estate podcast, Stacking Deeds. So uh, tell me about that. So for real estate investors, it's all about how easy it is to put together that Schedule E and handle that depreciation, right? And then tracking it from year to year because like, you got to make sure last year's lines up with this year's and yada, yada. We really like TaxLayer Classic. Again, you get all that for 39 bucks. It's one of the best prices out there. It tracks everything well, has helpful calculators, walks you through exactly what you need to do. And when you compare that to like the other ones, I mean, it's a substantial savings of $50, $60 wow. potentially to file your taxes because the other ones start kicking you up to like investor, premier, self-employed, that type of level, where again, you get all that with Tax Slayer Classic. If I've got a side hustle or, a, uh, or I'm an entrepreneur, I work for myself. Well, let's start with side hustle because if you're just side hustling and you just have a 1099 and it's very simple and easy, we recommend Cash App Tax if it's free. It's very easy to input that stuff. I would also go with TaxLayer Classic as the runner up, low price, different things. But, you know, but then if you get into entrepreneurship, like your business has grown, you start doing well, you need a little bit more, you might want to bump up TaxLayer to the self employed tier. It's only 20 bucks more, but you'll get professional help from people that really understand self-employed business taxes, which can be very helpful if this is your first time putting together a really robust Schedule C, or you have a lot of income and expenses and you don't necessarily know where to go. And then, of course, you have TurboTax Self-Employed, the most expensive tax software you're going to find. But if you really don't know where to go with your self-employed business taxes and you have a lot of income, they offer a lot of help and support to do it. That's about the peak that you get with DIY software, because then honestly, you know, if you are self-employed, 
there's a lot of nuances and it might make sense to jump to a tax professional yeah. and not DIY it. Yeah. Great advice. You know, uh, you've got so many more categories here. We're going to link to them on our show notes page at stackybenjamins.com. Also, if you're walking the dog on your way to work, whatever, we will have the link on our show notes as well. Of course, Kevin Bailey and the 201 newsletter will dive even more into what Robert's uh, talking about here today in our free newsletter, the 201. I want to ask one more thing, though, and that is in past years, I've seen a lot of ads, Robert, for exactly what you're talking about. People that go, you know what? I get halfway through and I go, oh, crap, I really need some help, right? I really need yep. a person. Which one of these apps is the one that will throw you a lifeline the easiest to some professionals? Well, I mean, it really is like what you want to get support with. If you just want to pick up the phone and you have a question, we like TaxHawk, which TaxHawk is actually Free Tax USA, but it's like their secret premium version. So I don't think a lot of people realize that, that, you know, TaxHawk is yeah. the Free Tax USA software, but they offer more support, audit help, things like that. And then we love Tax Slayer. Again, if you want to pick up the phone and call, they charge you to the premium tier. So you get all the forms at Classic, but for like 10 bucks more, you get all the professional support help. Um, and Tax Slayer Premier is great for that. Can I get halfway through one of these and change tiers? You can. They don't make you pay to the end. That's the thing. This is where the gotchas happen, but it's also where you can try all this stuff oh, out. Good. Yeah. So no tax software makes you pay until you click file. This is where they get you because they all say start for free. Well, yeah, I can enter all my information. <laughs> I can start for free. And then I find out that I'm at like, you know, the premium level and I owe a hundred dollars. Right. But you can try all these out if you want to spend the time entering your information and you don't pay until you either use the service, call for help and file your taxes. It's so funny. It's like I'm getting on a plane and, uh, you know, I've got my <laughs> iPad and it says that this game is free that I can play for the next two hours of my plane free with in-app purchases. And I always think, what does that really mean? Am I going to get an hour into my flight or 30? And sometimes, as you know, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Other yeah. times it's, it's completely useless. Robert, thank you for hanging out with us for a few minutes and sharing just some great tips for people this year. Eric Rosenberg did a fantastic job on this. And again, we'll link to the college investor and best software for taxes 2023 in our show notes. Thanks, man. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mitchell Walker. And when I'm not teaching people how to find hidden money, I'm out stacking Benjamins. Hey, let's throw out the Haven Lifeline and tackle some of life's most important questions. Our friends at Haven Life Insurance Agency, OG, they put what you value first. Oh, um, warm, late winter days. Oh, you know what's even more fun than that? Warm. Late winter days, hanging out with Len Penzo. Hey, hey, hey. Yes. How are you, man? With the cat dragged um, in. Yeah, here I am. I'm not used to being here on a, on a, not on a Friday, but uh, yeah, it's good to be here. I like the cameo. We got a cameo, everybody. <laughs> I got a cameo. You know, That's awesome. <laughs> if you don't listen to the Friday show from the award-winning LenPenzo.com, Mr. Len Penzo here. Uh, yeah, it says here, it's your loved ones in your time and we love Len. So there you go. It's why they made buying quality term life insurance. Actually simple. Go to stackybedjamins.com slash Haven life. Now to get a free quote, love what they're doing at Haven life because they're offering insurance the modern way. Their application simple online. You get an instant coverage decision. Prices are affordable. And of course they're issued by their parent company, mass mutual, more than 160 year old insurer. So, you know, they've been there before Len, we called you up dude, because, uh, well, Angela, has a question for you. Say hi, Angela. Hey guys, Angela in Nashville, North Carolina here. My question is for Len. Len, is your bunker your primary residence or an investment property? And have you looked at updating HVAC systems lately? I'm looking at a mini split for a duplex that I own. And I'm wondering if I should pull the trigger now before rates go up on my HELOC or do I wait and find out more about the Inflation Reduction Act, which doesn't really take effect until 2023? I see that the Redu uh, Inflation Reduction Act replaces the current policy, which is specifically for non-businesses and primary residences only. So I don't even know if my investment property will qualify. Huh. I'll probably 
probably just shake my magic eight ball and do whatever it says. <laughs> but I thought I'd see what y'all said. <laughs> Thank you for the for the question, Angela. And um, well, Len, have you ever had to update the uh, HVAC in the bunker? <laughs> Not in the bunker, but I've I've had to do a lot of things like that to the regular homestead. So you know I've had to upgrade or make repairs or or what have you. Yes, I've I've had to do that before. Do you think you wait in an, in a rising interest rate environment? Do you wait and see about uh, possible? She's talking about some of the tax incentives around energy efficiency that might be offered. Does she wait for that, or does she? pull the trigger well, because rates are just going up. Well, I think she hit the nail on the head when she was she kind of referred to jokingly, I hope, as the magic eight ball. I, you, we don't know what the future is going to bring. You just don't. There's so many weird things happening. So I would just evaluate if you're ready to do the HELOC now, go ahead and tap that, I, I guess. I, you know, it, you, we just don't know. And so I think you just have to kind of know how you feel. If you can afford it right now and you think that you're getting a, a reasonable deal on that now, then go ahead and do it. There's been many times I've tried to, I would think something was going to go one way in a policy, you know, with government policies, and then it went the exact opposite. So you just don't know. So I think all you have to do is, you know, just see if you're comfortable and trust your gut on that, I, I think. I, if you'd like, I can check the Magic 8-Ball and see what it says, but... Oh, you, you, well, you want to? As long as you're we here, could. why wouldn't we? Sure. Hold on here. Oh, here we go. Okay. Why don't you ask the question there, Joe? If you phrase it properly here. Sure. Should Angela go ahead and tap the HELOC now to install her HVAC system in a rental property, or should she wait until she gets more clarity on incentives? Well, since the eight ball can't give one of those two, it has to be yes or no, Joe. I think we, you, oh. let's remind you of that. Should she pull the trigger on the HELOC now? Yes, that's very good. Very good. Let's see. Thanks. Yes, without question. Oh. Well, there you go. There you go. OG, how do you feel about that answer? Yes, I like it. I like relying on on Magic 8 Balls for financial advice. It's a lot <laughs> From easier. Walmart. Well, I mean, but seriously, OJ, I mean, don't you, I mean, you don't know. I mean, if I had to guess, I think, I think interest rates are just going to, I think they're going to go higher unless something breaks, you know, in the, in the system. And then the, there's an emergency, you know, then the Fed's going to have to cut rates again. Right. And I would think the HELOC well, stuff would fall too, but I don't know. Here's what is going to happen. Interest rates will go down. Interest rates will go up. Interest rates will go down. Yes, interest right. rates will go up. Right. Stock market will go up. It will go down. It's just like trying to time that exactly right is kind of a fool's errand. The thing about home equity loans or home equity lines of credit is that generally home equity lines of credit are indexed to whatever the rates are. So even if you get it today and the interest rate goes down, your interest rate will likely go down with it. It will mirror what's happening in the market, just like if it goes up. If you get a home equity loan, that's going to be a fixed rate. But most banks these days do zero cost refinances. So what's the worst that happens? You borrow the money today, find out in a year from now that the rates are much better, and then you just refinance. And you can just say, well, now I want to redo it. I I think the one thing with the line of credit is sometimes if the market goes down, um, you know, banks will withdraw lines of credit. They'll just flat out withdraw it. So you might, right? So if you think, that's a possibility. You might be in danger of losing your line of credit. Then maybe you want to pull the trigger. You know, you'd want to pull the trigger now and not wait. Yeah, you definitely need to have a pretty good collateral position. I would not be trying to like make all this balance on you know ninety eight percent equity to loan value. You know what Correct. I mean? Because yeah. because right. you're right. That could have the same same thing that happens with credit cards. You know, you get a credit card and then all of a sudden, you know, the bank goes, eh, eh, your ten thousand dollar limit's now five. Exactly right. Well, I think the eight ball, the eight ball is certain. Yes, I, it's, <laughs> it certainly seems certain. It's fabulous. It's like some of the stuff I put into chat GPT where it very confidently gives me fairly bad advice. <laughs> Just very <laughs> confident. <laughs> Super confident. Thanks for that, Angela. You know what, Angela? You're getting a Stacking Benjamin's Greatest Money Show on Earth t-shirt for being brave and asking a question. I should get one because I talk to Len every Friday. I'm very brave. I said, do I get one too? Heck yeah, I had to man. come in on my off day. 
Heck yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Stack your Benjamins, but just don't tell Doug. Please, God, don't tell Doug that we gave you a shirt. Because okay. that, oh my, that, that'll be bad. Stackybenjamins.com slash voicemail if uh, you want to be like Angela and uh, ask us a question. How about that? Oh, gee, thanks to Len Penzo for helping us with that one. It's just like everywhere. Now that he's retired, he's it's like Friday, Monday. All kinds of time on a Monday. Yes. Yep. Well, hey, guys, that's going to do it for today. Hey, big thanks to everybody who left us a review of this podcast. Mom is always putting them on the refrigerator, and it's uh, so heartwarming when people leave a review and let people uh, know wherever they're listening to this podcast that our show might not be what you expect from the average money show. We're very proud of that, but also we're very happy that people help us do that. So if you're the type of person that leaves a review for a random stranger about their show, thanks to you. And by the way, if you've got a suggestion for the show, you want to chat about the show and how we make it, I'm always happy to do that. Joe at stackingbenjamins.com. But if you're not here to talk reviews, you're not here because of the fact that uh, you want to just text help software today. You're concerned about these up and down real estate markets like we talked about today, about like last year's stock market chatter that we had before around recession. So G and his team have put together a free guide that shares eight moves to make in a down market. The guide helps you plan more and panic less no matter what the market does. So head over to stackingbenjamins.com slash guide. That's stackingbenjamins.com slash guide to get this helpful free guide from OG. All right. I think that's it for today. Doug, you got it from here, man. What should we have learned today? Sure, Joe. I'll tell everybody what they should have learned today. Hey, it sounds just as good now, too. All right, let's go. First, take some advice from Robert Farrington. Looking for your best choice of tax prep software? It might not be the same as your neighbor's best choice. Different companies focus on different portions of the audience. Start with your own needs and you'll make a better choice. Second, van life? Keep your crystals charged, people. And keep them away from the bucket. But the big lesson? Don't wear your favorite silk shirt when you get the extra crispy bucket and drink the gravy. Hashtag safety tip. Thanks to Robert Farrington for joining us today. You'll find the College Investor's top choices for tax prep software at thecollegeinvestor.com. And we'll have a link directly to it in our show notes page at stackingbenjamins.com. And thanks always to Len Penzo for joining us to answer the Haven Life question. You'll find Len's award-winning blog at lenpenzo.com. This show is the property of SB Podcasts, LLC, copyright 2023, and is created by Joe Salcihai. Our producer is Karen Repine. This show was written by Lacey Langford, who's also the host of The Military Money Show, with help from me, Joe, and Doc G from the Earn and Invest podcast. Kevin Bailey helps us take a deeper dive into all the topics covered on each episode in our newsletter called The 201. You'll find the 411 on all things money at the 201. Just visit stackingbenjamins.com slash 201. Tina Eichenberg makes the video version of this show. Once we bottle up all this goodness, we ship it to our engineer, the amazing Steve Stewart. Steve helps the rest of our team sound nearly as good as I do right now. Want to chat with friends about the show later? Mom's friend Gertrude and Kate Yunkin are our social media coordinators, and Gertrude is the room mother in our Facebook group called The Basement. So say hello when you see us posting online. To join all the basement fun with other stackers, type stackingbenjamins.com slash basement. Not only should you not take advice from these nerds, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any financial decisions, speak with a real financial advisor. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and we'll see you next time back here at the Stacking Benjamin Show.
Then the uh, the high school kids uh, are in the f- state finals today. Great time to play a state championship game of soccer, by the way. 10 a.m. on a Wednesday. Cause, yeah, that's when everybody can go. You know when they had the semifinal game? Yesterday at 10 a.m. So for the first time in the entire season, they play back-to-back games. Quarter, you know, semifinal, final in soccer, which is, you know, relatively. Did both teams have semifinals yesterday? Yes. So the, at least both of their legs will be tired. Yes. Equally. The only thing I can think of is that the ice storm might have screwed up the schedule because we were yeah. closed for a, a, a week and they have to have it done by a certain time, I guess. I don't know. Nevertheless. So Alex left. I take Alex this morning at six. Come back, get Caroline ready. Like this old dad thing is sweet. It's this old dad thing. Not sure how this works. Have you guys tried this? The whole single dad thing. Not what it's cracked up to be. I'll be honest. <laughs> Everybody raves about it, but I don't know what they're talking about. I don't about. care what people say. <laughs> yeah, that was always my thing. And I don't know about, I can't remember yours, Joe, but was always because she's such a morning person she was always up and out the door at 6 a.m and i had to deal with the boys when they would wake up and get them ready for school and discover they were sick and it always forked my day and she got off scot-free like 90 percent of the time we worked out a pretty good schedule because it's more based on mine because i'd work early some days and late other days you know to vary my schedule so i i, I was like half time morning half time half time not but lately, even without kids, this workout thing I'm doing is at 5 a.m. It is just the 5 a.m. That's not a smart use of time. Like the weights. <laughs> the only part I like about it is I'm walking out of the gym at 6 a.m. and I'm done. Twice a week, Monday and Wednesday at 6 a.m., I feel like a total badass because I've already worked out <laughs> and it's 6 a.m. Of course, you have to take a four-hour nap to I, offset I know, the right? sleep that yeah. you didn't get. Gives you a lot of time to hit McDonald's for uh, two sausage, <laughs> biscuit, right. and egg. McMuffins Dude, the, on number, your way the home. number of days I've thought about stopping at Dunkin' Donuts, like seriously, the number of days I'm like, oh yeah, I deserve a donut. I totally deserve well, a donut. You can, you can get at Dunkin' Donuts as long as you have, you know, it's like, uh, I think uh, Jordan was telling me this the other day. He goes, you know, you tell somebody that you had a nice cup of coffee, a couple of eggs, some Canadian bacon, and an English muffin for breakfast. And they go, oh, sounds like a nice, well-rounded breakfast. You go, hey, I stopped at McDonald's, got two egg McMuffins and a coffee. And they're like, whoa, fat ass, settle down. Right. <laughs> is that funny? It totally is. Well, that's that Jim Gaffigan joke, right? Hey, anybody want cake for breakfast? Cake for breakfast? What the hell is a donut? Right? How did pancakes <laughs> slip past that standard? I can't eat pancakes without drowning it in syrup anyway. My kids like these things called Kodiak cups. Have you guys seen those in the store? I have no. seen those, yeah. Well, they're delightful. They're marketed as... Healthy protein things oh. in the morning to eat, and it's I was thinking chocolate. Kodiak Kodiak cups are like those things my dad had, where you put it between your cheek and go. <laughs> exactly. Yes, that's a different type of. Kodiak. <laughs> They're so healthy. They're so great. They Give them a it. little pep in the morning. <laughs> I spit it out before they get to school, though. But it's like literally, you pour water in this thing and stir it up, and then my kids add a scoop of peanut butter and Reese's peanut butter oh, chips on top, and then you nuke it in the microwave, and it's. Healthy because it has 10 grams of protein. Yeah. It's basically you just made chocolate cake with peanut butter in it. Right. I think a Snickers bar has 10 grams of protein too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hashtag winning. Hashtag healthy. This is a healthy breakfast. It has 10 grams of protein and it's basically chocolate cake. Speaking of foods, we played uh, the predecessor of what I'm about to play you before, but I'd never heard this one. And this is about food and, uh, an NPR show, a uh, supposed NPR show. And this is, this is Betty White making a guest appearance on a fake food show that's SNL. Have you guys seen this one? Florence, what delicious treat are you going to share with us today? Ah, well, a lot of people like my pumpkin pie. And of course, my, my carrot cake is obviously legendary. But if there's one thing I'm known for, it's my muffin. <laughs> <laughs> Get a whiff of that. (laughs) Pretty intense, right? Mm, I can't wait to taste your muffin. Mm. Mm. Wow. Warm. Mm -hmm. Mm Yummy. It's surprisingly salty. (laughs) I mean that in a very good way. 
Your muffin is remarkably velvety. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's true. I think we both assumed, and I think wrongfully, that a baker of your generation might tend towards a more dry or crusty muffin. Oh. Well, that's true. Uh, many bakers from my era uh, have dry or even yeasty muffins. Oh. A yeasty muffin can really ruin your whole day. Is it? It's got it. Be- Betty White's so amazing. Oh, my God. Oh, that's, I miss her. That's, that's funny.